The final question we ask ourselves when doing educational analysis has to do with the stages in education development. The stages an education system goes through as it changes and develops. Now this is a very complex topic and I'm going to present what I take to be one of the simplest models which we can work with and later critique as an account of education and development. The person I'm going to use to think this through is a guy by the name of Bibi and he wrote some wonderful analyses of how education develops over time uh, from a very simple system which really works uh, towards a formal closed model. And you can see this in the way that he describes his first two stages. The Dame School is completely unorganized, but it really has some very basic elements of formalism, very narrow subject content, memorizing all important. And you can hear in that that the, there's some very basic closed or uh, solid um, pedagogic and curriculum principles, but they are completely unorganized. And this then pushes towards a situation where it becomes more formal. And you can see his description of it comes very closely to what we take to be uh, solid lines across curriculum and uh, pedagogy. And you can see that, for example, rigid syllabus, rigid methods, one best way, one textbook, external examinations, inspection stressed, discipline tight, emotional life largely ignored. And what you can hear there is that it's a very strong emphasis on a solid curriculum, which has only got one message, and a solid pedagogy, which only does things in one way. And that way is very teacher-centered and very directed uh, towards making sure the learners memorize um, the information. Bibi then argues that that kind of a system is the ground that you need, it's the base that you need to move towards a more meaning-oriented school. And if we take a look at how he describes it, you'll notice that there's a substantial opening of the various curriculum and pedagogic variables. Uh, for example, a wider curriculum, that means more choice, a variety of content and methods, individual differences catered for, activity methods that allow for difference, internal tests which open out the assessment criteria from a, a closed and solid position to a more open position. Relaxed and positive discipline where the emotion and aesthetic life of the kids are, are taken care of and there you can hear a more personal relationship with the teacher starting up. So it's very clear that he's moving from a, a solid kind of system to an open system. But more important than that kind of characteristic description are the variables that he uses to try and describe why it is that the systems are like that. And that really has to do with BB, uh, with the teachers. Um, and he, he only works with two variables with the teachers. And this is what I want to work with because it is so simple and so elegant. He argues that it's important to take a look at the education of a teacher. That is their own schooling, what they experienced at school, because that forms their habits, the way that they actually feel, think and act about teaching and then their training, uh, what they receive at college or at university. And he argues that initially teachers at the stage one schools, they're both ill-educated and they're untrained. And that's, that's why they can only do the very uh, basics and do that badly. And then he argues you shift into a, a, a teachers that are ill-educated but actually trained. And those kinds of teachers can carry one message, one solid uh, system uh, with some kind of decency and with some kind of effectiveness. But it's only once that's established and it's only once teachers have themselves experienced what it's like to be properly educated, they carry that within themselves. They carry the taste and the feel and the memory of more open forms of education that that becomes possible at, school, um, at schools across the country. Now, um, let's take a look at... Uh, a way to actually picture this in a in a formal way which uses some of the language of the uh, book and some of the techniques you've taught. Now what I want to point out here is that we have two variables the teacher's education at school and teacher training and on the other side we've got two states we've got low and high. Now we know that that should produce around about four different possibility states. 
of which we're going to find out that only three are really possible. And to see why that is, take a look. We know that that's stage one. Okay, teacher education is uh, poor and teacher training is poor and that results in stage one. But the question becomes, why is stage two that possibility where teacher training improves but teacher education stays poor? Why is the second option not, for example, teacher education improving but teacher training being poor? And the reason is simple. The reason is, is that it's quicker to make the intervention at teacher training level, at the level of the colleges, at the level of a four-year course, rather than trying to transform the whole education system as a whole. So stage two does tend to be a situation where you have teacher education still being poor, but teacher training improving. Notice what I've done. I've added a, a kind of like a, a analytical code to the stages, and they've got three lines there. And basically what I'm trying to say is that the selection, sequencing, and pacing of knowledge all are solid and move towards solid. And later on, we're going to talk about the fact that maybe the stage one coding is wrong for that kind of a situation, and we need to develop our codes as we get more sophisticated with our analysis. BB then argues that when you move to stage three, what happens is teachers are now well-educated and well-trained and can start to work with a more open form of pedagogy and a more open form of curriculum. And that's symbolized by the more open lines. And then stage four is a situation where this improves, where teacher education gets even better and teacher training gets even better. And then you have like a super sophisticated uh, open model, which is really flexible, wonderfully open, uh, and, in, and really can work uh, with the students in terms of where they are and with their meaning making. And I've tried to catch this in a very simple diagram that says you move from a traditional system, that's your first struggle, to get the basics in place. And it's only on that basic level that you can build towards a progressive level. And in some ways this is counterintuitive because what BB is saying is he's saying don't try to be progressive, don't try to be open from the beginning. Start off with establishing one line, making sure it's solid, and on that foundation you can build. Now I think it's a, a, a brilliant argument, but I think that there are some problems with it which I'll point to later. Uh, now clearly what's happened is we're starting to need a new kind of uh, coding system to do with the way that things change or shift. And in the book, what I did was I picked up on uh, some of the changing states worked with in the I Ching. And it's a very simple system, but it does mean that we're shifting our lines uh, or our boundaries in the following way. We've so far been working with what we call a solid line and an open line. Now, in the I Ching, that's yang, yang, and yang, yin. Uh, and basically what that means, it's two lines which are either solid or open. But in the I Ching, they do an interesting thing. They say that as a solid line holds for a while, there is a good chance that it will start to open. It will change. And as it changes, the solid line opens. And by opening, it starts to push itself towards the open uh, space. And the same thing with uh, old yin line. And that by old yin, we mean open. There's a chance that that open line will start to solidify. And that gives us a kind of a language to work with the fact that BB is describing a shift from a yang yang or a solid line to an open line. And by doing that, that's a solid line opening. It gives us a different kind of a code. And let's kind of try and consolidate that in this, uh, this kind of analytical table we have over here. Now notice with stage one, what I've done is I've drawn zeros. Because I don't think at that stage we can actually say that uh, formal education is happening properly. And by zero, I don't mean anything's going on. And by zero, I don't mean that there aren't good intentions at these schools. There's wonderful people working very hard with what they can do. I simply want to catch that not much curriculum uh, development and not much pedagogic work in its formal terms is actually happening. So question one, 
relationship between the everyday and specialized, I've put it as a zero. And by zero, what I mean is that because the teachers don't really know yet what the full extent of the formalized knowledge is, you can't have an open relationship between the everyday and the specialized. And so we run through all the questions. Question two is the relationship between subjects. Three, the relationship inside subjects. Four, the selection of knowledge. Five, the sequencing of knowledge. Six, the pacing of knowledge. Seven, assessment of knowledge. And eight, the relationship between the teachers and the students. And maybe on the eighth one, I'm being a little bit harsh by calling it a zero, but I'm just trying to create some constancy here. And you can see that the shift from stage one to stage two is a shift from, uh, uh, it's an attempt to get a basic system in place. You shift from zero into a situation where you have a solid uh, pedagogy happening, where you're trying to carry just one message effectively across to the students themselves. But as the teachers uh, become more educated and trained, they start to be able to move from that solid line, from that solid system. It starts to open and transform until eventually they land up in a situation where they can teach in a complex, open, vibrant and flexible way where a number of opportunities and a number of choices can be make, made depending on the situation at hand. And there you have a, a kind of a more sophisticated account of shifting from a traditional situation across that line. And when you move across that line, you're moving, you're changing from uh, a solid line to an open line. And so we have a, a slightly better analytical language to work with it. Now, I want to point out that I think that we've got to think about uh, that description which I've just given you in a slightly different way. And the way that I want to talk about it is I want to say that BB's first two stages are trying to build towards a minimal pedagogy. By minimal, what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to say that one thing is in place. Now that gives you what we call a solid uh, line. Uh, however, teachers that are actually working in an optimal space are far more flexible. They're far more open. They're able to work with both solid and open patterns, not just open patterns. They're able to work within a solid way if they need to, and they're able to work in an open way if they need to, and they're able to change between the two of them. So I don't want you to think of the shift from stages one and two to three and four as being one where there's just a simple shift from a solid line to an open line. I want you to rather imagine it as being a situation where teachers shift increasingly into a more flexible space where they can do all the different options and varieties, not just be open. You're not forced just to be open when working uh, with a sophisticated pedagogy. By definition, I've defined open as being a situation where you can take a number of different opportunities and a number of different ways of doing things. And logically, that means that one of those ways is actually a solid line. You can actually decide what to do and then do it in a formal way. Stage four can very definitely have excellent teachers who work with a formal and traditional system. It's just that they can do other things as well. So we're really now shifting into a language where we're saying we're starting in, in education and development. We've got to understand how you firstly establish a simple system in which you try to get one thing done properly. And that's a big struggle, for example, in places like South Africa. And only once that's established, do you start to shift into a more open situation, a more flexible situation where you can actually work in a more complex way taking different options at different times, depending on what the situation demands. And that gives you the basics of understanding how stages in education and development work.